Yes, thank you, Professor Andre, for introducing me. And um, as um, he said, I will be speaking uh, in two parts. First part will be about vector stochastic differential equations in general. And next week, I will introduce vector stochastic differential equation with direction, which is a continuation to actually professors' lectures about um, forward equations with interaction. So first, I would like to say today's talk will be con uh, will be relying on two papers. First one is a paper from Purdue Bank about adapted solution of differential equations. And the second one is a paper of Mao. Uh, which is extension of the work of Pardue and Banks, uh, where he uh, extended the result about backward equations on uh, some uh, more general conditions of the coefficient for the equation. Before I give the theoretical results about existence and uniqueness, I will just give a motivation for these equations which comes back from the 80s, actually, from the work of, of Ben Susan, Bismuth, Hausmann, and Kusher, who were working on some control problems. And in their algorithms, they came up with this equation of form one, which actually has a drift, a diffusion state process, and the difference uh, with the comparison of forward equation, which is actually this um, final condition. So they realized that this equation is not as in a usual form as the equations of SDE form, which they observed until then. So what was the problem in this equation? They were looking of a pair of processes, which were Y and Z, where Y was called the state process and was giving the uh, the value of the equation actually, and Z was so-called the control process, which was helping process Y to reach the final point in um, final moment T. And so this pair of processes YZ was called the reachability problem because the goal was to uh, leave this state process in a final condition uh, Y of T. So what they noticed, they noticed that actually this control process Z of T can be expressed as uh, this difference where these brackets, square brackets were actually describing the quadratic variation between the um, state process and the Brownian motion. And this G was function from the diffusion dependent of um, state process. So another motivation for um, analyzing this equation was um, application in finance where the state process of uh, linear for backward equation is actually describing the arbitrary price of European option. Actually, if we have this linear BSD where um, Xi would be the final condition as we introduced, but in this application, it would be the payoff of the European price. The capital time T is ex actually the exercise date. And in the drift, this linear form would be uh, linear in um, state and control where R is interest rate, theta is premium risk. So by this equation, the uh, state process Y of T is, as I said, arbitrary price of uh, European option. And Z would be this control would actually be the hedging of this option. So again, it is a kind of reachability problem where this hedging would um, enable the arbitrary price to reach the payoff price in a final moment capital T. So for this, um, as it is in linear, it is uh, the simplest equation as it could, it could be. And also in the diffusion coefficient, we only have here the control process. But as the, uh, the price uh, option is under instantaneous uh, influence of, um, from the market, it would be interesting to observe how it would behave under some uh, 
perturbation function. So what my colleagues and me did um, in our work, we observed how the price would behave if we would perturb the final condition, as well as the drift and the diffusion via some <clears throat> additive perturbed function alpha and, and beta into drift and diffusion, where those functions would in drift would, would be dependent of both processes while in the diffusion only of state process. So we observed some kind of stability problem in a sense, if we would like to have the closeness of the arbitrary prices be, be um, without and with perturbations, we estimated how big those perturbations could be and vice versa. If um, we wanted to keep the closeness of uh, Ys on, um, for a given level, well level, we estimated how big this uh, interval of closeness could be in accordance to the size of these perturbations. This application can be of BSD can be also similar. Now this can be extended on American price, where now this arbitrary price would be. Um, described via so-called reflected backward stochastic differential equation, which would have an additional term in um, definition of the, def the equation and also third part in a solution. The difference is that because the American option can be exercised in any moment before uh, the final exercise date and the European can be exercised only on the exercise date. Uh, beside those two type of backward equations, there are a lot of others. For example, we can have um, another Brownian motion where one would be backward, the other one would be forward Brownian motion. Two of them are independent. And this kind of equation is backward doubly stochastic differential equation. Also, this control process can be dependent of moment t in that, uh, and also the whole drift can be dependent of time t also, not only s, which is after t. These kind of equations are Volterra equations, et cetera. So there are a lot of other types of equations, generalization of backward equations, but I will not speak about them this time. So this was something about the motivation for uh, introducing those equations and their applications. Let us then introduce the complete probability state, state with the usual notation omega fp, so where f is um, filtration standard, which is um, defined via an dimensional linear process. And for Euclidean norm, we will use standard notations. So as I said, the backward stochastic differential equation was introduced by Perduing Peng in 1919. And its differential form is given in this green box. So the, it looks the same as the forward one. It has the usual drift and diffusion with the general functions, but the difference is in the final condition. So in, a co in comparison to forward ones, we have this final condition in the moment capital T. So for L, R, and M, R, we will not note the spaces which we will use. So with L, R, we have F capital T measurable random variables such that uh, their R moment is finite. And also M, R is a um, set of family of R, D uh, value def processes which are adapted to the FT, FT filtration such that this expectation is finite. So this first hypothesis is just essential one for the definition of the final condi conditions and adaptness of the drift and diffusion function. So final condition psi is from L2. Function f, which is in the drift, is defined on this uh, product, g on this. So we have that rd is for the state, rd times m is for the diffusion. And they are measurable with respect to the given products. It is important that for um, any t and zero values from state and uh, control for y and z process, they have to be from M2, just for the equation to be well defined. 
So definition and uh, for the existence and uniqueness of the solution is um, given uh, in this box. So we have that pair of processes for from M2 times M2 with the different dimensions because of the, the state and control process is an adapted solution on, of introduced BSD if for every T and every Y and Z functions F and G are from M2 spaces. And if equation, differential equation with the final condition is satisfied almost surely. And the solution is unique. If for every other solution, Y bar, Z, Z bar, we have that following qualities hold. So the equation of the square of the difference of state process is zero while expectation of uh, integral of the square of the difference of control processes is zero. So different definition for control and state processes. The main theorem, <clears throat> sorry, which is given by Pardue and Peng, as I mentioned, so requires Lipschitz condition because <clears throat> their results from the first paper, which I mentioned, is on, are under Lipschitz condition. So for functions f and g, um, usual Lipschitz condition is required for some positive constant l, f and g satisfy those two equations. And the main result um, requires some auxiliary lemma. So lemmas, so result will um, go in few steps. So in first step, we need this lemma, which gives actually the result of uniqueness, existence and uniqueness for the BSD of simplest form, which is given in the last line in this blue box. So we have the drift is only depend, is deterministic dependent of time and diffusion has uh, this function G dependent only on time in addition to control process. So it's a to F and G all are in the simplest form. So for this, we need assumption that- uh, Just a minute, excuse me, and, but yes. F and G are random. Uh, random, yes. sorry, yes, they're random. I said that they're deterministic, they are random, yes, but- And only... G of T and Z of T, DWT. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I had it in the integral form and that's why I left S. Sorry, yes, you're correct. These are just typos. Yes. Um, okay. And we need that psi is again from L2. F and G are from M2 uh, with the inappropriate spaces. And then for this simplest equation, here is again GT and Z of T because it's a differential form the unique uh, solution exists. So this proof goes directly for presentation, Martin Le presentation theorem. If we define Y of T like conditional expectation from final condition minus, this is function F from the drift from small t to capital T, then my, by Martin Le presentation theorem, which can be fine in book Karatsas and Shri, Brownian motion and stochastic calculus. There exists a Z bar from M2 on zero capital two RD times M, such that expectation of C minus, but now the interval integral is from zero to capital T is equal to initial value of Y plus integral from zero to small t of this new process Z bar. If we define that Z bar is given like a sum of function G plus S, then we have actually, I will go back, this form of equation. So by this Martin representation theorem, we have uh, in once also the existence and uniqueness of this Z and by its definition, Y is also unique. So the parallel process is, is unique and it satisfies almost surely the equation. In next step, in next theorem, so the equation now has a little um, wider form. So now the drift is dependent not only on time, but also of the process Z, which is the second coordinate of the solution. And the diffusion stays stay the same. 
null assumptions which we need. The first one for the final condition, y of t to be xi is the same to be from L2. But now, uh, and for g also, the assumption is the same because this didn't change. But f has additional property that now for uh, z value zero and any t, it is from M2 and it is it satisfies Lipschitz condition with respect to process z. So first we will prove uniqueness. So let us assume that there are two pair of solutions which satisfy the equation. And let us apply the formula on the square of the difference of state processes. And then uh, take expectation. We will have the first member. Then let me go on the right side first. Then first derivative with respect to this um, square multiplied by drift, the same for the diffusion and um, second derivative divided by two for the multiplied by the square of the diffusion coefficient we, which we put on the left side of equality. By taking expectation, this expression with respect to Brownian mo motion is zero. And if we apply on this member first elementary inequality twice f multiplied by this difference of y's less than equal than sum of the square with respect to some uh, cons positive constants and apply um, Lipschitz condition on function f, we have on the right side of inequality this sum with respect to integral of the square of the differences for the state and control processes. So this form of inequality is um, um, apply for, we, can, we can apply Gronwald's lemma on this inequality. So before that, I will just recall Gronwald's lemma. So if we have two continuous functions, u and p on some um, closed interval alpha beta, and if we have functions um, a and q, which are Riemann integrable on the same interval, then from this inequality, the following one holds. So in our case, you would be this difference uh, equation uh, expectation of square of the difference of state processes as here. So B would be one and Q would be this constant two multiplied multiplied by square of L. So if you apply Just going, minute, may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, you say that an expectation of stochastic integral equals zero. So do you assume that the force moment of y and of z exists? Because you have to raise this expression to the second power mm -hmm. and this should be finite. No, uh, under, under the stochastic integral. Uh, this one, for z you mean? No, no, above, okay. above, above, no. Stochastic integral with respect to that DW. Uh, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, why the expectation is zero? I know this property if you have the second moment of the integrand and if it is finite. But now the integrand is a product y times z. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually for usual stochastic differential equations, uh, people do localization, they, they solve equation before some stopping time, and stopping time is exit from some uh, bounded set, for example, and then uh, say, okay, before this stopping time, t minimum tau, the expectation is zero, and then pass to a limit, obtain ground wall lemma, and then pass to a limit and obtain uniform estimates. But for backward stochastic differential equation, so we solve them backward, and I cannot. Uh... But we can always put this integral to be from zero to t minus from zero to small t, and then for the constant interval it will hold, and for the forward we can use the same procedure. Maybe this is something for the first. Mm, okay, maybe, but but uh, I don't know how how to do it. Mm. How, how to local make localization or maybe some a priori estimates? 
Uh, yes, yes. I, I honestly, in this moment, I didn't think about this. I just so use it as a fact. Maybe you, you will tell us later if you have a time. Uh, yes, okay. Let me think about this until next week if I don't think something smart now. But uh, okay, first what crossed my mind is the just to split it in two uh, and one which would be on the constant interval, it would be okay. But the other one, I, um, I will think about it. Okay. Okay. It's an uh, interesting remark, yes. Uh, so let's go back uh, when we apply Gronval lemma on the first, on this expectation, we would have that this is zero, which would give us by the definition, the uniqueness of state processes. And then from this, we would have that uh, this expectation of integral with respect to square of difference of z is also zero. And by the definition, then we have the uh, uniqueness of control processes also. And for the existence, we need the, to introduce Picard's iteration. So for in the first step, we have that uh, z zero is zero. And while we introduce uh, y and z then by uh, iterations, where we have that this equation star describes iterating step. This equation star is of particular form where now we have that the drift is familiar as z is in a moment is in a step n minus one. So the drift is now dependent only of time. And in the diffusion we have g which is on time plus z in the time in moment n so this equation is actually of the form which we uh, which existence of uniqueness and um, uh, existence of uniqueness solution gave in previous lemma so this equation has unique solution y and z n in every uh, moment n for every n actually so what we want to show that this uh, this sequence converges so again with the similar techniques uh, technique as in the uniqueness part we again apply to formula on the square of the difference of state processes between two successive uh, members of the sequence so we have this uh, expectation of square of the differences of y then this expectation integral for the control processes and now i omitted that uh, suspicious member with respect to brownian motion and we only have here the sum of those two processes, those two integrals. Now we will introduce new notations, a n and b n for the expectations of the square of the difference of two successive um, members for the sequence of y and z. And then from the last inequality, go back this number two, we did um, just mean, and the first integral in number two is from t small to t capital. Uh, yes, yes, yes the, the both of them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, I also did not. The, the last one is okay here also. Both both are from t to t. Yes. Uh, and now uh, when we introduce this new um, n i a n and b n, we have this differential equation from inequality two. So differential equation with respect to A and B. So if we integrate it, we will have all integrals are from small t to capital T, and we have the this holds. So if we split it in two inequalities because we want to estimate A and B separately, we will have the this integral uh, exponential function multiplied by b n plus one is less than equal than this, where we just repeated the iteration n times. So we will have the supremum of b one multiplied by this constant, and for a n plus one similar, the same actually, not, not similar. So as differential with respect to m a n plus one is uh, non-positive actually, we have that B n plus one in zero is just in moment zero is bounded with this sum. And then we again replace the estimate which we already obtained plus this one. And by repeating the iteration for B n 
in zero n times we come to oh sorry we come to um, the initial uh, step b1 in time zero so when n goes to infinity we have that uh, this uh, uh, will go to zero so we have that b uh, b will go to zero and by the same uh, algorithm we will have that a will go to zero from which it follows that y n and z are n are cauchy sequences so there exists a limit for those two sequences which actually solves our equation by the definition of picard iterations so the next step would be to extend i'll have to just uh okay to extend the equation a little bit more so what we have to what we will introduce that the drift is now dependent from both state and diffusion processes so the novelty is that now we have the state process as a new parameter in the drift and the diffusion coefficient is coefficient is now dependent of state process also and as before we have z in addition to this function g so what is as before is that final condition is from L2, but uh, function f is now more general. It is defined on those on these spaces and measurable with respect to this product. And now it satisfies Lipschitz condition with respect to both coordinates y and z almost surely. And uh, g is as before uh, Lipschitz function with respect to y. So then this the theorem states that there exists a unique solution for this BSD. For the uniqueness part, the proof is similar as in previous lemma. So again, we apply it to formula, but now we have more members because our uh, drift and diffusion coefficients are more richer. But if we again apply the same uh, elementary inequality or on this first member after equality and on this member and then apply Lipschitz condition on both f and g if we omit this suspicious member which we'll discuss more with respect to Brownian motion and then then we are again left with uh, this sum with respect to some more general constant c1 um, in front of the integral with uh, at the second integral. So again, this form is suitable for applying Gronwan lemma and the conclusion will be as in the previous theorem. So we have the uniqueness for Ys and which will impose the uniqueness of uh, process Z. For the existence, we will uh, again use uh, Picard's iteration, but uh, now the iterating step is more general. So in the initial step, now y0 is 0, and uh, y and z n in moment in time for n um, are defined and given as a solution of this equation. So now drift uh, in a moment n, we have that y n minus 1 is familiar. So now the actually the drift is only dependent of z. And uh, again, G is familiar because Y in previous moment is, is known. So then G is only also dependent of time. So this equation is equation from previous theorem, from previous step. So its solution YN, ZN is, um, exists and it is unique. So as in uh, previous, uh, uh, algorithm, we again apply it to formula on the difference of two successive uh, members of this iteration. So we have something like this. This It is a similar also as in a uniqueness part, where C is some generic constant. Here should be also small t, I apologize, it's a typo. Now we don't need uh, two, uh, into two new notation, we only need one. So we will introduce a n of t to be expectation of this integral. And from this inequality, we have a new differential equation with uh, this initial condition zero. 
uh, if we integrated it, we have that am plus plus one of t is less than equal of uh, this integral with respect to constant c. And by iterating this uh, n times, we have that um, am plus one of zero is less than equal of a one of zero with respect to this constant given with ratio. When n, when n goes to infinity, a will go, a n plus one will go to, a will go to zero actually. So again, we have that, um, we have that y is a Cauchy sequence from which it follows, let me go back, from this inequality that z will also be a Cauchy sequence. So there exists um, limits of those two sequences, which are y and z, which solve our uh, extended equation in this step. And the final theorem is actually the theorem which gives the uh, existence and uniqueness result for the general BSD, which now has the general drift and the general diffusion, which are dependent of both state and control processes, where now um, F and G satisfy the general Lipschitz condition, which we introduced at the beginning, uh, by, given by hypothesis H1. This proof goes from several steps, where actually in first two step, we have uh, those BSD, which are um, as in lemma one and theorem one, but we are omitting uh, Y because uh, the proof would be similar, but just for simplicity, we will omit Y from these equations. So, Third step actually would be to focus on this uh, first equation actually, and connect it with the first lemma. In first lemma, we observe the simplest BSD given in this form, which has only drift dependent of time and in the diffusion control process. And we, uh, we explain that by martin Mill theorem, there exists a unique uh, process Z, which, um, uh, is actually given by the definition of conditional expectation with respect to final condition minus this uh, drift uh, factor. But for uh, a given Z bar, uh, there exists a unique Z where uh, Z bar can be expressed as a function G of Z. So by this, uh, we obtain that uh, we can state that there exists some psi from Rd times M, such that G from psi is um, equal to, to Z. If we prove that this psi is uh, measurable, then we actually have uh, that our function G can be dependent of Z which would extend our diffusion coefficient. Here, without loss of generality, we can use that omega is given by this set of continuous um, uh, and the Brownian motion and the filtration is uh, just Borelli's sigma algebra on this omega. Then this mapping uh, from T omega Z is given with a triple T omega in this function G, uh, G, which is described by introduced Z. This function is B action. And then as our uh, inter -def defined product is complete and separable metric space by the um, result of um, uh, Etier and Quartz from Markov Processes book, Characterization and Convergence, there exists an inverse function, which is a Borel measurable. Uh, so inverse of big G. And actually inverse of big G would um, give us the, the statement for the Psi which we need. And the restriction on zero t because we at the moment at the start we defined it on zero capital T. Also, the restriction on zero small t uh, follows that again this is the inverse function is uh, be measurable. So then our psi is well defined. 
So by this, we prove that uh, the diffusion in both steps can be extended by the new coordinate, new parameter psi, which will actually have a role of our process Z. So by this, the general result for the existence under Lipschitz condition is proved by Pardo and Peng. And for extension to the non-Lipschitz case, which as I was mentioned, we can generalize the equation by introducing new members and new future features, but also we can uh, relax the conditions uh, for the drift and diffusion. So this is the second uh, approach for generalization of the equation, BSD equation. And um, the kind of non-Lipschitz condition, which Mao introduced in his paper in 1995, is given by hypothesis H2. So for there exists some function kappa, such that F and G satisfy those inequalities. So for uh, the drift and the Z process, we have usual uh, square, but this kappa occurs in the state process. This, for some uh, positive constant, kappa is concave, non-decreasing function, positive one, such that it starts from zero and it satisfies this um, equality. And since it is concave, uh, it will also satisfy this uh, triangle inequality, which is used in, in proofs. I will not go uh, into details of the proof, but I will just give some useful example. In first example, we are back to the Lipschitz condition, but those kappa two and kappa three, given via some uh, logarithm functions, are very often used in some application and were given as a motivation for this, um, this theorems, the extension of the results. So the proof goes, as I mentioned, I will not go into details. It goes more or less similar, but um, the, the Gronwell lemma uh, is replaced with the Bellman's lemma, with the Bihari, sorry, the lemma in the inequality part. So I will just uh, go through this because we don't have enough time and this is not the focus of um, this lecture. But um, as I said, the proofs are more or less similar with um, replacing the Gronwald's lemma with the Pihari's lemma. Here is I will just uh, give a brief look on this Pihari lemma which now use this inequality which our function kappa from hypothesis satisfy actually. And I will just give a short list of references. So Pardue and Peng, as I mentioned, so this is just a, um, a remark on the perturbation problem, which is interesting in application. This is for the Martingale representation. Peinov and Simono for the inequalities and this for the existence of the inverse function. So for this introduction about BSD, this would be all for today from my side. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Uh, and introduction to such interesting object as, uh, as uh, backward stochastic differential equations. Maybe somebody have questions or comments, please. Okay, maybe uh, after the second lecture, uh, where we uh, will see the application of this theory to the equation with interaction, we will discuss it. So uh, thank you very much again, and uh, uh, see you next week. Thank you for bye. inviting me, and uh, mm -hmm. I owe Professor Pilipenko the, the longer explanation about the zero integral with respect to Brownian motion, so we will discuss it ne next week, okay? Thank you for the interesting okay. talk. Uh, have a good day. And you also thank for everybody for attending the lecture, and see you next week. See you, bye. Bye.